Hello, and welcome to today's show, Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, international leadership expert and trusted advisor. Welcome to Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm so delighted that you joined me today. I have a very special guest with us today. Her name is Mary Bess Johnson. I hope you will be inspired by our conversation. Mary Bess is joining us today from her home in beautiful upstate South Carolina, where she lives with her husband, Chris. Mary Bess is an amazing person, and most importantly, she is an inspiring woman of God. I can't wait for her to share her remarkable journey and story with you. In her own words, Mary Bess is on a journey, a journey of self-growth. In 2016, she gave up retirement to join the John Maxwell team. At that time, her singular thought was all about helping others grow and fulfilling God's purpose for her own life. Now, Mary Bess has been helping individuals and organizations improve for decades, and she is passionate about encouraging and helping new team members on the John Maxwell team. There, she serves as a peer teaching partner and team leader on the President's Advisory Council. She says, this is the perfect way to live out my heart's desire to serve others. Mary Bess not only enjoys serving on the John Maxwell team, she also enjoys being an entrepreneur, serving her clients, serving as a community volunteer, and offering humorous wisdom to her grandchildren, all seven of them. Today's topic is living a life of significance. Now that's a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and I can't think of a better person, a better leader, a better human being to address this topic than Mary Bess. I met Mary Bess several years ago when I was attending the International Maxwell Certification Conference in Orlando, Florida. When I met Mary Bess, I just knew there was something very special about her. And when I had an opportunity to have a conversation with her, She spoke so passionately about her life, about her purpose. I mean, she was just glowing. So I can't wait to host this incredible, amazing, and lovely human being, my friend, colleague, and mentor, Mary Bess Johnson. Now, before I bring her on, I just want to take a moment to connect the dots between today's topic on living a life of significance and legacy living. Now, there are many ways that living a life of significance connects to legacy living, which you'll hear more about later. For now, just let me say that legacy living is a way of being, a way of living and moving through the world so that we make the conscious choice to be the difference we want to see in the world. We make that conscious choice right here and right now, not in some distant future, way out there, right? We make that conscious choice day in and day out, 365, 24-7. Now, I'll say more about that later. Now, let me introduce you to my friend and colleague and mentor, Mary Bess. Hello, Mary Bess. I want to welcome you to my show and uh, thank you so much for agreeing to be a guest. Could you just please say your name and where you're from for us? Yes, Um, my name is Mary Bess Johnson and I live in Pendleton, South Carolina. It's in upstate South Carolina. All right, excellent. Thank you. And Mary Bess, I know that you have just a lot to share with us today, but I want to begin by asking you, what does it mean to live in God's will for your life? Uh, For me, 
it, it means that I, that I want to seek God's will for every move that I make and, and everything that I do and knowing that I am just living to be the person that he intended me to be for one thing mm-hmm. and to always, uh, it's, it's not approval that I seek. No, no, it's not. It's just, just, just to be, just to walk with, with the Lord and to be in his will and because his will is perfect mm. and his timing is perfect. Mm-hmm. And, and as long as I am staying in that place, then it, it keeps the stress out and the strife and, and everything that can, that can you know, come from that, that, that place of, of indecision or not knowing. Mm. Mm-hmm. There's so, I find so much peace in knowing the Lord and having a personal relationship with Jesus, there's, first of all, there's so much peace in that. And then because I want to live in God's will and be in God's will, then it's just, it's kind of like simple. I think sometimes we complicate it, but for me, sometimes it's just like a simple thing. It's just like, Hey, Mary Bess, you love the Lord. He loves you. Just walk with him. Just walk with him. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. And Mary Beth, it is simple. It's very simple because uh, we're strong Christians. We're very firm in our faith. And, you know, sometimes people who are new to the faith, they really don't have a clue about what we're talking about. So so can you just say a little bit more about what God's perfect timing is and being the person that God intended you to Mm be? I, you know, Dory, I really appreciate that, <clears throat> that you mentioned that, because I can remember many years ago, if you had said those same words to me, I didn't, wouldn't have a clue as to what you meant. Mm-hmm. Not really. So until I really had started this personal relationship with Jesus, not just knowing about God, mm-hmm. not just going to church not all of that routine, like I grew up doing. Uh, but when it, when it really got down to that real relationship and I realized that, that God was just such a, such a friend to me mm. and that he had my best interests, of course, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I was, I'm, I'm created in his image. And even that's hard for some folks to understand uh, especially those who who maybe are new believers, and they're saying, how in the world can I be created in God's image? Well, you know what? Because scripture tells us that. And that's how, that's, that's another part of the simplicity of it. But, mm-hmm. but for me, when, when I have that love relationship that I feel with the Lord, I, I just want, it's, it's like, well, let's see, I know it's like parent child relationship. Mm. Maybe mm-hmm. when the, uh, the, the child wants to please the parent. No, the child loves the parent. The child doesn't even have to think about whether they please the parent or not. Mm-hmm. I don't have to think about whether I please God or not. I love him. He loves me. And so staying close to him, I, I, I'm just so comfortable in knowing that. And, and then in staying in his will, typically for me, if I'm getting out of God's will, oh, I know it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to start feeling really uncomfortable. And, I, you know, that's just that, that Holy Spirit in me speaking to me. Yes. So you know when you're in God's will because you're walking in joy, you're walking in peace. And when you get out of out of his will, you get something inside of you yeah. or beside you, however that shows up for you, the Holy yeah. Spirit talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. Very uncomfortable. It's just that it's that intuitive, uh, that conviction that that I just 
No. Now, that has developed over the years, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was not an instant thing with me. But I think just staying, staying in God's word and even, you know, music, um, any kind of praise, any kind of Christian music, um, from the old hymns that I've been singing all my life to contemporary Christian music, it, it's all, uh, it all has saturated me through the years with God's word and, and the goodness and his grace. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, I often think about where would we be without the Lord and where would we be without his grace and mercy? And so knowing that you are walking with the Lord and listening and, you know, that he's ordering your steps is so significant. Mm. And we have been in the, in the same organization, the John Maxwell team, for a number of years. That's how we met. And I'm wondering, Mary Bess, if you could just share a little bit about what living a life of significance means mm. to you. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, I've got to tell the, the listening audience that Gloria was my uh, table host when I attended my very first John Maxwell team international certification event and that was in August of 2016 and so I met her that day and just absolutely loved her from from day one but the really wonderful thing that has been such a lesson to me is that we were doing our five minute table talk and my five minutes went over and so when the buzzer goes off those of you are listening, when the buzzer goes off, you stop talking. Okay. So I stopped talking. And when everybody around the table finished with their, their table talk, the first thing Gloria said to me was, now, Mary Bess, would you like to finish and tell us that last little piece of your story? Oh, that meant so much to me. Mm. so very much and uh, that's just but that's a huge lesson to me um, in listening and and knowing that even with a time frame like that a time constraint that we still have important things that we want to say and for some of us, it just takes us longer to say them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But living a life of significance. Oh, yes. Hey, I have, as long as I can remember my whole life, just wanted to just feel like I was making a difference and changing the world and this and that. And I kind of used to think of it in such broader terms uh, until I joined the John Maxwell team in 2016. I came out of retirement. Mm-hmm. Um, I had I had had a long successful Mary Kay cosmetics career, and I uh, had been retired for a number of years and started feeling that nudge. And the, what the nudge was was God saying, "All right, all right, when I'm not done with you yet, you know, it doesn't matter that you're retired. I, I've got more I want you to do." And you know, Gloria, that's that is humbling for me mm-hmm. to say that. Mm-hmm. That is not an ego or an I thing like, oh, I've got so much I could know. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. That is a very humbling thing to know that you have been used in some way or another in the past. Mm-hmm. That God has used you to uh, influence others. And so when you know that there's still room for that, oh, my goodness, it just stirred within me. And I just knew something was like, oh, got to get back out there. So that's when I joined the team. And for me, living a life of significance is not about me. Although I am the, on the disc personality disc, I, I'm an I personality and a D. So, but it's not about me. It's about the other person. Mm-hmm. And everywhere I go, I just want to add value to other people. I just want to smile. I want to cut a joke. I want to do something that makes that person feel better, makes that 
person feel important. And it's not that I have to do big, huge things at all, but I know that I know that I know that one little ripple can just create an ocean of waves yes. and, and change. Yes. And that if just one person is influenced by something that I have said or helped them with, oh, that's that's a, that's a wonderful. So it's it's just living living life to its fullest. It doesn't matter my age. It doesn't matter that you know I'm old as dirt. <laughs> I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> You are not. <laughs> but, you know, it really, that does not matter. Um, all, all ages, children can live a life of significance. Yes. Children can have a positive influence. Yes. Yes, I really believe that too, Mary Bess. And I know that you have added so much value to me personally and so much value to the people in your community. And I'm sure folks that I'm not even aware of. <laughs> and so I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your own journey with your self-growth, maybe with the John Maxwell team or beyond, and talk a little bit about your career journey as well. Mm. Yeah, the the... Uh, the self-growth, really in, intentional self-growth started, gosh, you know, in the 70s, 80s. And I guess, well, really probably more into the 80s when I read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of mm-hmm. Highly Effective People. That was the, one of the first things that really got, got me going on self-growth and and thinking into other areas like that. I tell you, I've always kind of been a, been a deep thinker. <laughs> I remember even as a, as a teenager, you know, really just getting to thinking about all sorts of things that some people didn't have a clue what I was talking about, but I could really uh, get into some, some, some thoughts. And I still, I still am very much a deep thinker. I'm also very curious. So, when, when I was in my Mary Kay career is when John Maxwell first came in alone. Mm-hmm. He was doing leadership training mm-hmm. for us with Mary Kay. It was when he was still at the, his, his church in San Diego, when mm-hmm. he was still pastoring there back in the 90s. And um, I became uh, very interested in everything he said. I joined the the tape of the month club, you know, and I've got a whole oh, yeah. Bucket, yeah. bucket load of <laughs> cassette tapes. Mm-hmm. And, but just really, really, really loved him. And I used his leadership lessons every month at my sale. I've, I've had a sales meeting every single week for the Mary Kate consultants. Mm-hmm. And once a month, we had leadership night. And so I would have a leadership lesson. And mind you now, this is back in the late nineties uh-huh. and around 2000. And um, I, I uh, would present that leadership lesson and the, and the, our, my team would, would participate in it. And then um, the, the actual John Maxwell team was started 10 years ago in 2011. So back in the day when I was following John, I didn't, you know, there, there was no such thing as being certified, but I remember thinking, it's so funny, you know, here I am in South Carolina, he's on the West Coast mm-hmm. in San Diego, and I can distinctly remember thinking, oh, I would love to work with John Maxwell. Wow. Or, or for him. <laughs> Or, uh-huh. you know, not, then I said, but nah, Mary Bess, he, you know, he's on the West Coast and you live in South Carolina and you're, you're not, you know, you're not 25 and just <laughs> charting off on a new job. So, um, but that seed was planted, Gloria. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And um, so then the years went by and, and in 2016, mm-hmm. I looked more into 
uh, joining the team. And so that, that's when I decided to become certified and absolutely have just adored it. Well, it seems like you have been around a lot longer than four years, five years, four and a half years, whatever that yeah, is. <laughs> five, yeah. It'll I mean, be five in May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems like you are just one of the founding people and, you know, no, really. Yeah. Yeah. You, you add such value, like I said, not only to me, but to so many other people on the team, Mary Bess. You are just a giver. <laughs> well, thank you. I, and you know, it, it's funny when you say that, because I really hadn't thought about it, but it could be that because John Maxwell and his teachings and books, readings, everything have been such a big part of my life that when I transitioned into the being a team member that I just brought a lot of that with me. Mm. I mean, because really, even when you think about, uh, I've talked to Mark Cole about it before, and, you know, he's been with John for 20 years, mm -hmm. something, and um, he remembers those days that he and John would go to the Mary Kay training, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. he was going with him then, so he remembers all of that, and I don't know, maybe if that didn't, uh, I've just felt so at home, so very much at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I, I remember when I joined, I'm one of the founding partners, as you know, and it just felt like I found my, my people, mm -hmm. <laughs> like-minded yeah. people, but totally different than, uh, than me. And uh, I brought a lot of things along from uh, my early uh, exposure to John Maxwell as well. So maybe that's it. I don't know. Yeah. But I, but I, I so appreciate you saying that, um, you know, I'll, I'll always be one who'll, you know, raise my hand and say, you know, send me, I'll go, I'll do or whatever. I'd, I'd love to help. But I always want my humility. I want to be humble about it. Yes. Always that I have the confidence to raise my hand and say, send me, I'll go, I'll try. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I do want to, but I do want to do it in a, in a humble way. So uh, I certainly wouldn't want to be, you know, I wouldn't want it to be perceived as, oh, you know, you just busted in and trying to be part of the, <laughs> no, I just, I just feel at home. Oh, thank you for saying that though. Oh yes, you're, you're so welcome. So Mary Bess, I know that sometimes many people start the year with a particular word mm -hmm. uh, that influences them, that guides them, that grounds them in whatever way. And I'm wondering, do you have a word for your year? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Actually, I uh, chose this word for 2020. And uh it was towards the end of 2019 that I was thinking on it. And uh, I think I was on a call with Mark Cole one day, actually, and he was talking about it too. So I, I really, for the last two or three years, I've had this sense of urgency about wanting to really, really want to live a life of significance mm -hmm. and, and to just do whatever mm -hmm. I could. Um, I'm sure that age has something to do with it, for heaven's sake, you know, and, but, but nevertheless, I've had that sense of urgency. So I was, I was sitting there the day thinking through it that, that day, and I wrote down the word now. Hmm. And, you know, commonly, like with, the, with Nike or whoever it is, you know, do it now, but it, 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 it wasn't quite that for me. And I kept looking at it. I had written it out, N-O-W, and I looked at it and I went, oh my goodness, not over with. Mm. Mm. Mercy. Yeah. Mm. And I, mm. I felt this confirmation and this peace mm of that is exactly what I had been feeling. Mm. It's not over with. Mm. And I, it, it had, that word has motivated me. So, so it's my word for this year too, as well, yes. 2021. Yes. So what it really means to me is exactly what it says. Here, here we go back to 
simplicity. I just love to, to see things simply and to not complicate things. And so now to me, that means not over with. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not over with. That's basically right. It, it, and so you say, what's not over with? Yes. Well, the fact that I want to live a life of significance, mm -hmm. that's not over with. Mm -hmm. Or whatever I'm wanting to achieve, uh, it's not over with. So really, I can apply that to, to anything. Um, it it, it gives, gives me a sense of like another moment, another chance, and it could be literally that I, you know, I die tonight. And so, but even still, I want to live up until I take my last breath mm -hmm. with that feeling of it's not over with. Mm -hmm. And it, it is, you know, it's, it's not a, um, a driven thing at all. Mm -hmm. It's not like I strive for this. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just how I feel. But um, I had not quite been able to put my my finger on what all what all I've been chewing on for the last two or three years mm -hmm. but but what you know the Lord just gave me that word and then when I when I looked at not over with I went that is exactly it's exactly how I feel yeah so I just believe that we all um, can have that attitude mm -hmm. whether we choose to or not mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, well, it, 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 it helps me Yes. And so you, you talked about significance. You talked about the urgency to live your life. And you also talked about humility. And I'm wondering, so not over with to me says that God has his hand on you, that he has more for you. And in my way of thinking, uh, you know, it's not your business to know what that is, <laughs> you know, right. just, just pay attention and walk and walk. Yes. You'll, you'll keep ordering your stuff. That's right. I often think of it with, uh, with your, your John, your sweet husband, and, and, as a, as a uh, maestro conductor, I just, every time I think about God ordering my steps, I see him well, even sometimes in a black tux, <laughs> <laughs> orchestrating our steps. Yes. <laughs> oh. oh, my. I'll never think of God the same way again. <laughs> I know. I know it. Can you imagine? I love it. Oh, gosh. Yes. Oh, I love that. <laughs> but I do. I really do. I, yeah. I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've thought, you know, mm. when I think about God orchestrating our steps and then yes. I think about your John. Mm -hmm. So, um, I really do believe that. And of course, the, as as the years go by, I can look back now and see, oh my goodness, how things unfolded. You know, mm. this turned into this, and then yes. this happened, and this happened. And um, that, an encouragement from me on that to, to listeners would be just to trust. And like Gloria just said, take that one foot in front of the other and keep stepping forward. As you step forward, when you take enough steps, you're gonna be able to look back yes. and see how things are unfolding. Absolutely. And I know when I'm in the middle of something, it sometimes doesn't make sense, but when I look back, it looks like a straight line. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yes, exactly. So Mary Beth, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, I, I just, no, just a teeny little bit of the kinds of things that you're doing in your community and how you're helping women. And can you just talk to us a little bit about that as well as um, I see you as a very, I'm going to say creative and <laughs> generative person. Uh, if yeah. you could talk to us a little bit about your creativity, <laughs> your interest, and again, how that's flowing out of you and into the community as well. Mm. Oh my goodness. Well, I've always been very, as I said earlier, very curious. I love to learn new things. I love to try new things. Mm. I am uh, pretty much a risk taker uh, mm -hmm. uh, with some things. So, you know, when I was 69 years old, I did a tandem jump, skydive, mm. and I loved it. And that mm. was so, and I wouldn't, I, yeah, I would not mind doing it again at all. Uh-huh. But um, so 
I'm interested in things like that. Um, I am very creative. I'm creative as far as stitching and anything like that, or I'm resourceful. I can think of odd ways to fix something, <laughs> maybe, mm -hmm. you know, to, <laughs> to make it do or whatever. Yes. Um, <clears throat> And as far as in the community here, I, well, now one thing that I did that's interesting to me that I have been involved in the past, I am not right here in this community. we moved here four years ago, but mm -hmm. for a number of years where I lived before, I was involved in a uh, quilt program at our church, Prayers for Squares, mm. or Squares for Prayer, I can't remember which way, but mm -hmm. um, we, we would make quilts and uh, just lap quilts and give those to folks who were really going through a hard time. And um, so that program was, was very meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. And because I, I did know how to sew and stitch and all that, I, I could do that kind of thing. But even when I, when I don't know, I'll, I'll take a stab at it to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always one to say, hey, I, I don't know, but I'll find out. Or I don't know how to do that, but I'll figure it out. Anybody taking a tandem jump at 69 is willing to learn. I'm just saying. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I know it. Mm. Isn't it the truth? I know. <laughs> to me, that just seems like, you know, okay, well, everybody does that. But I guess not really. <laughs> not everybody. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I'm always just. I, I look for ways of doing something really in a fun way too. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I, lo I love to laugh and I love to have fun. As far as what I'm doing here in the community with women, for one thing is um, I'm involved with a really beautiful nonprofit organization here mm -hmm. who um, offers a hand up and not a hand out. Mm -hmm. And so their clients who come to them have the opportunity to take classes at their center, which are all volunteers. Mm -hmm. So they can take classes in money management, anger management, diet, nutrition, parenting, basic skills, mm -hmm. uh, real anything, it, just anything. Um, and when they take the course, the class and show up and do it, they can earn dream dollars and then they can take those dream dollars and they go to one of the resale stores, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be like um, Habitat's resale, mm -hmm. that sort of situation. Mm -hmm. And they can purchase goods because most of these people are very, very low income. Mm -hmm. And also one thing that was really so much fun at Christmas, they have this huge Santa shop program. So all year long, businesses all over the area donate Christmas gifts, brand new toys and things mm -hmm. for the Santa shop. It's really a very large uh, amount of stuff. And so the people can go shop in the Santa shop. Mm -hmm. When they earn the dream dollars, mm -hmm. they got to earn them. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And they, then what they do is they provide them ways to earn. Mm -hmm. So so I've been doing classes, Zoom classes with, with them now since about uh, October. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still have one going right now. But I, I love to do that. And, the, you know, it's just, it's volunteer, absolutely volunteer. And I do have a, a financial relationship with them too because I've done a lot of their leadership training and mm. uh, within their staff it's a pretty large organization mm -hmm. but um that that's how I serve here I, I I'm involved in our church love that and in the community here I'm, I'm a board member of the uh, Pendleton Historical Society mm -hmm. Foundation mm -hmm. it's been around a lot of history here where I live and um and I'm excited about to get it involved with um, a program at Clemson University, which is right here, mm -hmm. that Professor Thomas, Rhonda Thomas, has started a number of years back. Slowly but surely, she's making headway on it. Mm -hmm. And it's called, the name of the program is Call My Name. Mm. 
Um, she has learned when she came to Clemson to be a professor that many, uh, that back in the eight, late 1800s, most of the people who built Clemson University were African-Americans yes. who were the children of slaves mm -hmm. or they, they were in prison and they were allowed to help build and so many, many of them have been, when they died, they were buried here. And um, she has been discovering their grave sites. Mm -hmm. So she absolutely has a full blown program going now. And it actually is hiring someone mm -hmm. to head it up. And um, I am on tap to be a volunteer mm -hmm. in the program. So that's something else that's really near and dear to my heart, right here in the back door. Yes. Good. And then my husband. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, I love. Oh, my goodness. My husband. Yeah. And we have seven grandchildren. We have three daughters and seven mm. grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Mercy. Well, you know, you. I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are so involved and so oh. engaged and... <laughs> You find places, you know, not only that's a right fit for you, I mean, God places you there, but you also find a way to, to pour, just to pour blessings into, into so many people. And, you know, the people that we impact, like right in front of us, they're going to share and they're going to share and they're going to mm -hmm. share it, and it just keeps on rippling out. So, that's I mean, right. your, your footprint, your fingerprint, your impress is just remarkable, Mary Bess. You know, Gloria, one time, many, many years ago, I heard in a message one day, the person said something like, I don't want, I don't want to stand before God when I die. I don't want to stand before God and, and hear the words, oh, welcome home, my, my child, good and faithful servant. Oh, but I had so much more I wanted you to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. know, that, that's almost kind of like negative motivation, but, but not really. Mm -hmm. Not really. Mm -hmm. Because that hit home with me. Yeah. I do have, we do have responsibility on this earth. Yes. We do. Uh, not only responsibility for ourselves and our families, but but to serve others. Yes. So I have a question for you. I know you've talked a lot about the work that you have done on your intentional growth and your career with Mary Kay. Were you ever a teacher in your life beyond mm -hmm. like teaching your kids? Nope. Which is a huge responsibility. I know. Yeah. You. I mean. No. I. I you, that's interesting that you asked me that. It's and that's really strange because yesterday I was thinking uh, something made me think about I remember years ago when people would say to me now are you a school teacher <laughs> <laughs> and I would say no because I was in the corp I was working in the corporate world when mm. I joined Mary Kay mm. in 1991 mm -hmm. I mean I, yeah I, I was I was doing that and had been in that area for many many years mm -hmm. and and uh really just uh, joined mary kay to it relieve some stress that, on my job and, uh -huh. and just have some fun and uh -huh. make a little extra money hey that was fun and so that was back in 1991 and i, I quit my job a year and a half later to mm -hmm. pursue mary kay full-time mm -hmm. so it did turn into a full-time career for me but that's funny that you ask about teaching i don't know what it is <laughs> <laughs> but but i do like i do like to teach i mean yeah I, t I mean and that's that's one of the things i like about training and in, in leadership yeah is is the teaching part of it mm -hmm. Well, you're very good at it. And uh, so maybe maybe the trick is not thinking about yourself as a teacher. <laughs> yeah, I know. Maybe so. <laughs> I know. That's weird. Oh, my oh, goodness. Well, I love teachers. I think they have the most wonderful job on the planet, and we don't give them nearly enough no. uh, credit and respect. 
so I, I just think the world of teachers. Mary Beth, we are just about at the end of our conversation this day, which is a shame because I would love to just keep listening to you and learning <laughs> from you. Is there anything that you wished I would have asked you that I haven't asked you? Hmm. Not that I can think of right now, not at all. I, um, as far as things that are coming up, my, my plate is full with family and, and, and my business and yes. my volunteer time and then Global Youth Initiative, it's coming yes. up. Mm -hmm. And you know, your listeners might not, but you know that I absolutely love your book, Pass It On. Mm. And that's another thing, you know, that, that book means so much to me. There's, there's just, it just strikes my heart. It just hits my heart. Mm. And I think because I grew up in the South in that era and uh, I knew then when I was a little girl, I knew it was wrong, yeah. but I didn't know why. Mm. I just knew it was wrong. Mm. When I'm in the department store, when the water fountains were in two different places, I just didn't get it. And I, I just knew in my heart that that it was it was it was wrong. And so your book has just it's meant so much to me. I'll tell you what, Gloria, it's given me an opportunity to express what I just expressed to you. Mm -hmm to someone that I don't know, mm. to be able to share the book with them, read the story to them, and then to be able to, to just share that how much it means to me and how important I think it is. So I, I think, um, yeah, that's, that's one thing before, we haven't talked about, but, and, and I know that's about you and your book, but still it's, it's our story. Yes, it, it, is. it is our story. It is. Mary Beth, I'm really glad you brought it up. I did not want to bring it up because this is about you. And, yeah. you know, I also just want to thank you because you have been such a, a powerful ambassador for this book and, and, you know, not only about the book, it's really about, I'm hoping, <laughs> you know, somebody listening will hear that it's our story. It is our it story. It is not my story. It is our yes. story, right? Yes. And sometime, we keep saying this, but sometime, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and maybe this podcast is a vehicle for it. I don't know. You know we could talk about it, but I would love to just have a deeper conversation with mm -hmm. you about the our story piece of Me that. Too. It is um, our story. Yes. And, and this is a story that our nation, and I'm going to say the world, is involved in right now. Right now. In a way that we really have not been together in this conversation before. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes, And it's I so do. important. So thanks uh, for all that you yeah, do, do and all that you are. And uh, thank you again for bringing it up. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad that I did bring it up. Yeah. Um, it, it's interesting that I don't know that I've articulated it that way before, even in, in my in my mind mm. just then by the what I said about our story. But I, I'm just telling you, Gloria, I can just I'm five years old and I am in the department store, you mm. know, in Anderson, South Carolina, and I'm looking up at that the two water fountains, one that says white and one that says colored. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, no, what? No. My neighbor, I play with my neighbor. Yes. She's a beautiful little brown skinned girl. I lived out in the country. And so it is our story. Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah. yeah. All right, my friend. Well, thank you again. Oh, thank for you. All for... you are and do. And uh, thank you for just pouring life and, you know, giving life giving words. You know, they're like oxygen for people. Uh, and we need, we need that oxygen. I'm so, I'm so grateful. And I'm so humbled to, to have been invited to just chat with you. Of course, you and I could talk until the cows came in. I know. <laughs> we could. <laughs> mm, so uplifting, so inspiring, 
so many pearls of wisdom. I feel so blessed to know Mary Best Johnson. Clearly, she is a leader's leader. She makes a difference in her own life and in the lives of so many others in her own family and throughout the world in her work as a leader, as a certified John Maxwell coach, as a grandmother, and as a community servant. To learn more about Mary Best and her work, you can go to her website, and that's www.marybestjohnson.com www.marybessjohnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N dot com. Now, if you are just joining us, I'm Dr. Gloria, and this is Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. We just heard from my very special guest, Mary Beth Johnson, entrepreneur, JMT coach, and inspiring community servant. If you want to make your life count, if you want to be the change, be the difference in your own life and in the lives of others, be sure to listen to this episode again and again. And hey, be sure to tell somebody. You can find me right here on iTunes, Alexa, SoundCloud, Amazon Music, iHeart, TuneIn, Amazon Audible, Spreaker.com, Talk Network Radio, and so many other places. I just love it. The list just keeps growing. Be sure to tune in again next week. Before I close today, I just want to give a shout out to all the men, women, and children, all the young people around the world, because you know what? We are the ones. Yes, we are. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is, don't wait. Don't wait for somebody else to step up and make things happen, because guess what? They might not step up. In fact, they might not even know you're there waiting for them to do something for you. But you can be the one. In fact, can I just tell you something? You are the one. You are the one who can make a difference in your own life so that you make a difference in the lives of others. Now, remember, how you live is how you lead. How you live is how you do everything. Now, if you happen to miss any part of this week's episode or last week's, you can simply download the recording and listen to it at your convenience. You can even listen to it on the go. Check us out at www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. Now that's a mouthful. I'm going to say it again. www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. You can learn more about my work and legacy living make your life count by visiting the Gloria Burgess website or by visiting me on LinkedIn or on Facebook. And on Facebook, you can find me right here. Facebook dot com forward slash Dr. Gloria Burgess, PhD. Okay, DR for doctor, Dr. Gloria Burgess, PhD. Pretty simple, right? Before I close today, thank you for tuning in, for allowing me to share a bit about my journey with what legacy living is all about. Not just living and learning, but living and learning and serving so that you make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. It's about being on purpose every single day, 365, 24-7. Legacy living is a powerful way to make your life count. Thank you. Thank you again for joining me for today's show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, and this is Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. Please join me again next time for another episode of Legacy Living, 
Make your life count. Now remember, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what legacy living is all about. Have a fantastic day. And remember now, make the days in your life count. God bless you. That's our show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess. I hope you'll join me again next time. Until then, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what legacy living is all about. Here's to you. Have a fantastic day and be sure to make it a yes kind of day. Remember to celebrate the music of your life. Make the days in your life count.